So today we are looking at this crystal ladder filter design. A crystal ladder filter consists of crystals and they're arranged in a way that it looks like a ladder. I guess that's why crystal ladder filter. Crystal ladder filters have a very, very high Q, which is phenomenal and helpful. <laughs> and they are very narrow band. In my case, I want to make build a SSP filter with 2.4 to 2.7 kilohertz bandwidth and they are just perfect for that. However, if you need more bandwidth, that's not the right choice for you. You would need to, to come up with something else, ceramic filter or other solutions. And they are also good for band stop and band pass. That's actually the only filters you can build. They have not a 50 ohm impedance at the input and the output so you always have to impedance match or depending on your amplifier impedance output and uh, the next stage input impedance you should uh, be careful about that if you don't match these filters you get a, a higher ripple in the passband and so it's really recommended to match these filters um, all right, and then what you also need to know is you need to know the true replacement values of crystal. Uh, we look at that uh, in, in a second. And also you need to select the crystals according to their frequency. What you're gonna do is you, you buy a bunch of crystals, not just eight, you buy probably 20 or 30, and then you start uh, selecting them um, to their serial series resonance frequency and pick the ones uh, which are closest to each other and you shouldn't have more than like let's say 50 hertz difference from one to the other of these crystals these crystals are um, in, a, in a row typically with a series capacity um, for tuning each and every crystal except the second from the left and the second to the right you don't have a series capacity so what you typically do you pick uh, one of these selected crystals with the series uh, frequency which is closest to the the center frequency of your band pass and you you place it here at the the second place and the second last place and then um, with a calculating tool with a calculator tool you can tune these other capacities if you want to really really make it right and really make it good and have a perfect filter so without tuning you won't get the, you won't get the perfect results but i didn't tune much i did tune a little and played around with this uh, capacitors you see if i have two in parallel so i can tweak and tune and but um, at a certain point i gave up because the filter was good enough <laughs> for <laughs> for my purposes. So characterizing the crystals, a crystal is characterized, it's, uh, how, do you, how do you say, it's uh, replacement values, uh, the replacement circuit looks something like that. You have a series resonance, LS and CS, you call them also the emotional capacitance and the emotional inductance. And these two components, or these two, um, yeah, um, components, give you a series frequency, and then you have a parallel capacity, CP, which is given mainly by the the crystal housing and the holder and the wires, the connectors, and this together with the um, induction LS gives you a parallel resonance frequency which is a few kilohertz apart from this series resonant frequency and interestingly uh, you see the the 9 megahertz is right here and the series resonant frequency is below it but when you um, use these crystals in a cold pits oscillator or in a pierce oscillator then you usually work on on the slope here you have to have a slope for the crystal to oscillate at the, at the proper frequency and uh, you get then closer to the nominated or the, the specified uh, 
value of the resonance frequency, not so much at the serial resonance frequency. So uh, the actual oscillation frequency is somewhere in between and um, typically not here where you see this resonance frequency of Fs, uh, Ls and Cs. At serial series resonance you have lowest in, uh, impedance and at parallel resonance you have the highest impedance. And the way to measure these um, replacement values the only replacement value that you can measure directly is CP, the parallel capacity. You just plug the crystal in a LCR meter and you measure this capacity. In my case that was 5.3 picofarads. But the other the other three values you have to indirectly measure. And there is there are well known methods how you can do this and they are very well described. One method is well, very well described from Johnny Grandi. And he says you need to make three measurements, one without any serial um, additional capacity. The other one is you take your crystal plus 27 picofarad and the third one is you take your crystal plus 10 picofarad. You measure then the, the, you measure the parallel frequency, the parallel resonance frequency and then the serial resonance frequencies with these three capacitors 10, 27 and none. You should actually measure then your references here, these reference uh, uh, capacities and then you can calculate CS, LS and CP even you can calculate. And so the calculated CP is 4.8 and I measured 5.3 so that's pretty close. And the CS, the serial um, capacity is uh, very low, it's always in the femtofarads. It's, this is 20 femtofarads and 15 millihenry for the inductance. So selecting the crystals, I already mentioned, um, what you have to do is you buy good crystals, not uh, cheap Chinese stuff, but uh, some good quality crystals and then you go ahead and measure the series resonance frequency you build a little oscillator I did build this one here the culprits oscillator with a 2N3904 I run it off 9 volts here this battery and if you don't load the output too much uh, you can measure the resonance frequency properly don't load it heavily take a frequency counter or spectrum analyzer or something with a high in input impedance and then you can measure the, the the crystal frequencies and you know tag them and then pick the ones that are closest to each other and then I take uh, I took a tool called Dishal calculator the crystal ladder filter calculator from Dishal it's it's um, it's a tool that's already around for many many years it's pretty old but uh, again the physics stays the same and you select uh, your series frequency typically you take exactly the frequency of the number two crystal that you put in uh, I just took my megahertz and you select the bandwidth uh, you select a, a po uh, an allowable ripple you have to allow some ripple here to get steeper uh, cutoffs and the number of crystals and then you choose and whether the emotional inductance or the emotional capacity and then it calculates all the capacities you need the shunt capacities capaci capacitances and the series capacitances and then you go ahead and build your crystal and then you go measure it and that's the measuring result of my crystal uh, this is measured with uh, my spectrum analyzer, 50 ohm input, 50 ohm output and of course it's not matched, I didn't match them here. When we go to the bench I tried to match them a little better, uh, the match the filter better to see what happens to the ripple. You see the, the cutoff here on the higher side is not ideal, I should probably tune a little more and of course it's not at 0 dB, it is uh, maybe at minus 8 dB or something like that. So, and the bandwidth is 
what is it 2.28 uh, kilohertz that's pretty much uh, like what I wanted more or less but really uh, my my understanding of these filters is that you have to to play around and and to really tune tune the the, the the filter it takes a little bit until you you get a feeling for it and of course 123.5 uh, picofarads there, there's not there's not such a capacitor around anywhere and so you have to take uh, what you get and then try your best So this is the 8-pole uh, crystal ladder filter. You see the 8 crystals. You see all the SMD coupling uh, capacitors. And allowed the room for um, tweaking and tuning capacitors in parallel. So I could play around a little bit with it. So that's all it is. There is no matching at the input or the output. So the input impedance and the output impedance is roughly around 100, 120, 140 ohms, something like that. I don't know exactly. And I hooked it up to the spectrum analyzer. And we quickly take a look at this, the spectrum analyzer then. Here. All right. What you can see in the performance of this uh, crystal filter you see a ripple here in the passband. It rolls off on the lower side at around 8.9976 megahertz. And on the high side it is uh, 8.9999 uh, almost. So that's a bandwidth at 3 dB of about, let me measure it. Uh, it's Let's pick this point here. So we have about 2.2 uh, kilohertz, which is pretty narrow. I thought uh, I wanted to have a, a 2.7 kilohertz uh, bandwidth. 2.2 uh, is okay. You can use it for SSB, of course. It has some advantages too, but actually the design was for 2.2. And the ripple you can see here. I mean the the damp the damp. Uh, let me take this out and I'm um, sorry here we go normal so we have a damping of about a, a filter loss of about 7 8 dB well that's not great it's not really bad and that's probably what you get what I'm trying to to play around with now is uh, put some a trim pot on the input and the output in series and see if I can get rid of this ripple if I start matching the impedances a little better because what we have this input impedance of the filter this 100 ohms or 140 ohms are now connected to a 50 ohm source and 50 ohm load of the spectrum analyzer so it's not really good matched and let me see if I find a better match. Uh, I would expect to that this ripple uh, goes away. It probably adds more loss, and uh, we, I don't know exactly what it will do to the to the the steepness of the filter. Um, typically, what you see, you can see it here as well. It's your on the higher side. You have a steeper performance than on the lower side, and that's because you're working on a crystal ladder filter, you're working on a serial impedance of the crystals, a serial uh, um, resonance frequency of the crystal. And of course, a little bit further up, you, come, you will be in the range of the um, parallel um, resonance frequency. And so the parallel resonance frequency kicks in and helps you um, get a, a steeper um, a cutoff on the higher side but I mean well, what are we talking about here this is minus 60 minus 70 dB I mean this is uh, perfectly steep uh, excellent uh, filter from that perspective so I have added a um, um, uh, resistor at the input and the output 
of the crystal ladder filter. These two trim pots I played around, they are in series, this resistance of the filter. I've played around with them, I've probably having a few hundred ohms on each side and that's the best I can get concerning the flattening the ripple of the filter. If I take out the resistance again, let me try this. So the input is down to zero, at uh, the output and the input is now down to zero. And now you see again um, the full ripple showing. So it has to do with uh, impedance matching. It's pretty sensitive actually. A few 10 ohms more or less affects the ripple already. And I must honestly say I have no idea exactly the what's the exactly the input and output impedance of uh, my amplifiers on the on the, um, the transceiver board are probably 50 ohms but i have to investigate that a little more and probably my transceiver sees exactly what we see here uh, on the spectrum analyzer so um, we go from there i did i did just cut open a crystal for the fun of it and I wanted to see well guess what's inside and I did with a saw cut off the, the, the cap this is the holder there's some sort of of insulating or I don't know what kind of material whoops Okay, and here that's the crystal. That was one of the connections on this side. That's the connection on that side. And we see the, the crystal material, with, which is piezoelectric. And all we have is a connector on one side, a connector on the other side. And I guess it's the, the magic of uh, how you cut and create and cut and design the quartz the quartz itself 